Hello everyone, this is Rick and welcome to Astro Club. Today's episode is Astral Projection Targeting for Beginners. Before we get started, just want to mention Patreon real quick. We have a new supporter of the channel on Patreon. Mauricio Coronel is an Astral Scout. And he is joining the many others who are supporting this channel and supporting the work of spreading the knowledge of Astral Projection and the wisdom that it can uh, provide to people, a window into their souls and perhaps the souls of their fellow man. With Patreon, there's no commercials, um, there's an email where we can talk back and forth pretty easily, and you get the advanced videos on Sunday. And if you're interested in joining, there will be a link in the description. Next up, private lessons. If you'd like uh, a private lesson to learn how to astral project, I'd be more than glad to uh, to, to do that and offer you some pointers and, and the benefit of my experience. It's great for people who've never done it before or people who have projected and would like to, uh, to do it more often and have more control over the experience. If you're interested, there will be an email to contact me in the description for more information. As to projection targeting for beginners. Before I get into it, I just want to mention a previous video, which was five steps to full astral projection. It was a visual series of visualization exercises, which would help you get out of your body once you're in the vibrational state. Many people experience the vibrational state, but cannot manage to get out of their body. Those techniques will assist you. As you recall, there was some pranayama breathing that you had to do in order to get into an altered state. Then you would visualize looking at a simple object like a vase, a candle, or a book. And you'd have to close your eyes and see if you could still picture it without any intruding thoughts. Then eventually you would progress to transferring your consciousness to an inanimate object somewhere in your room. Uh, experiencing what it's like to be that object in the room. Next up, you were to project your consciousness anywhere in the room without using a physical object as a crutch. That's the next step. And then finally, um, you visualize your body floating uh, away anywhere you wish. Just, I use this particular technique again just recently. I uh, usually I skip the vibrational state and just project right away but no I woke up and I had the uh, vibrational state going on so I just used the the basic visualization technique to, Im to uh, imagine myself lying on the floor and what that felt like and, I, I, and what have you so that I was able to to project myself using that visualization technique. Uh, the more accurate you are as to how it feels, for instance, I've already laid down on the floor next to my bed and stayed there for a while, just getting a feeling for what it's like to be there. The smells, the feelings, whole nine yards. The more, the better that you can do that, uh, the more luck you're going to have uh, astral projecting using these types of techniques. Now, that was the video, Five Steps to Full Astral Projection. And, and that was great because that'll help you get out of your body from the vibrational state. But once you get out, it's important, I think, to understand how astral projection targeting works. Many people who haven't projected before have very grandiose goals for their first projections. Uh, people say, oh, I, I want to go back and visit the dinosaurs 70 million years in the past, or I want to visit the ancient pyramids as they're being constructed, or I want to go to some planet. And all those things are possible. I have done them. However, the chances that someone who is new to astral projection would be able to achieve those advanced goals while it's not impossible, let's just say it's extremely unlikely. 
just like it's unlikely that someone who just learned to swim at the YMCA on Saturday would try out for the U.S. men's swimming team on Sunday. It wouldn't, it's not impossible, but I think you'd agree with me that it's highly unlikely. So how do we best target our astral projections when we're new so that we have the best chance of success? Well, I've had thousands of projections and I certainly recall what my earlier ones were like. The easiest projection target to begin with is anything that is in your line of sight. Because if you can see something, it is much easier for you to fixate your consciousness and your will saying, I want to go to that particular spot, whether it's a spot in the clouds or whether it's a building in the distance. Uh, remember, the astral body is not controlled by a brain, nerves, or muscles like your physical body is. No, it is instead controlled by your pure, unadulterated will. So the reason line of sight works quite well is because, as I said, it's a lot easier to fixate your will on something that you can see, that you can stare at. Next up, the people who want to go back in time to see the dinos, to see the ancient pyramids as they're being constructed. It is infinitely easier for a new projector to travel in the present or here now than there, than there is time traveling. Time traveling is like going for your master's or your doctorate, whereas regular here now projecting is like high school. So you really need a lot of experience in the uh, here now projecting uh, before you really try to hop into the, the time traveling phase. And, and all of this has to do with not setting too high a goal for yourself. Yes, it's, it's great to have lofty goals, but if those goals are much too aggressive, all you're going to do is just disappoint yourself. Um, perhaps you had a perfectly good beginner's projection, but you wanted to swing for the fences, okay? You didn't, you didn't just want a base hit in baseball. You wanted a home run. And as I said, it's probably not the best way to go about trying to achieve your astral projection near-term goals. So go somewhere where you can see line of sight. Do it in the present, the here now. Uh, just because when you typically leave your body, that's the default. You're typically in the present or here now. There may be a little bit of time driftage one way or another, but for the most part, you'll find yourself in the here now. Next, let's talk about idents. Now, you've heard me use this term before. Robert Monroe was the, uh, the founder of this particular term, and I adopted it because it's as good as any other. And an ident is quite simply a location in time space or space time, a very particular one. Uh, if you've been somewhere and you have deeply inhaled the place that you were at, let's say you're on top of a mountain somewhere and you closed your eyes and you smelled uh, what the mountain smelled like, you felt the breeze, uh, flowing over you, uh, you felt just what it is like, the peacefulness of being in this particular spot. You may even feel slight discomfort because there's a rock that's jutting out just a little bit uh, and you're sitting on top of it. Uh, and when you open your eyes, you look around and you burn the image uh, that is available to you 
into your memory. When this is all said and done, you have essentially mastered the ident of that particular place. And when we're talking about going somewhere, going to an ident, we're basically talking about a noun, which is a person, place, or thing. Uh, so uh, a person, if you want to go to a friend or someone you know very well, it is infinitely easier than going to someone that you don't know. If you have been friends with someone or if you, they're a family member and you have spent many, many, many hours and years with this person, you probably already have a pretty good ident as to who they are so that you can keep that image in your mind. And when you will your astral body, you will your astral body to go to this person whom you have captured in your mind. And that's that's how you'll get to that individual. Whether you're successful or not has a lot to do with just uh, how good your will is on fixating on that person without allowing any extraneous information to start leaking into your consciousness from elsewhere. So that's how you get to a person. The place, as I just said, is the same way. Um, you, you meditate for a short time in a place, just pulling in all of the stimuli. You'll have that ident. And what's very interesting is chances are that you'll end up in that place probably at about the same time when you imprinted the ident. Because the ident isn't just a place. It's also, as I said, space-time coordinates. Uh, when I uh, project normally, I just find myself at my old, uh, in my old bedroom at my parents' house. Uh, because that's where I had my first thousand projections. Uh, that place, the ident of that place, has become so imprinted on my consciousness that it is the default destination where many of my astral projections start. That's because I have that ident wrapped up. Lastly, we talk about things. There are ancient superstitions going back many thousands of years where possessions of a dead person were thought to be perhaps haunted by that person or that having that object that they treasured, that they carried with them for long periods of time, that in essence, that item captured something of who or what they are. And so when you have that possession of perhaps someone who's passed away, you still have a connection to that individual. And isn't it interesting that even today in our modern society where we outright reject superstitions like uh, owners haunting their past possessions, that we still have wills where someone gifts treasured possessions to a variety of people uh, as a way for them to be remembered. So even though we don't necessarily believe those old superstitions, we still hold with the idea that somehow this item that was treasured by someone who you loved and now they've passed on, that that provides you with some sort of a connection to, uh, to that person whom you once, uh, who you once uh, associated with or, or liked or loved. And, uh, I think it's very interesting because it's a fact that objects that have accompanied someone for a long period of time can be used to travel to where that person is in many cases. In essence, what has happened 
is the ident of the individual has imprinted itself on the object. Now, this can happen in any object. It just so happens that metallic objects tend to be best for this purpose, uh, probably because they're more uh, susceptible to electrical currents and, and we're dealing with very, very subtle electrical currents here, but that's my experience. And it's, it's quite interesting that your grandfather will pass down his, his gold pocket watch, for instance, uh, rather than a broom. I don't know. I think, just think a lot of this stuff is unconscious, but it's still part of our racial memory when we think about what we should do to be remembered as we pass on. So to sum it up, let's say you're a new projector and you've finally gotten out of your body. You should have already set a basic goal for yourself. It's a lot easier than trying to come up with a plan last minute. To make it easy on yourself, make sure it'll be a place that you can see line of sight. Make sure it's in the present here now. Let's keep our goals more modest. Uh, we don't want to be shooting for uh, other planets or the ancient past or what have you. That's, that's a little bit more advanced. Let's, let's keep it line of sight here now. Uh, then you can try going for an ident. Um, you know, think about that person that you know very well and think about projecting yourself to them. Uh, that place that you know very well, where you, you feel sure that you know the ident, you can try that. Or if you've got um, a particular object and you know that it is uh, at some distant location and you're familiar with the object, you can try projecting yourself to that particular object. That's eh, a little bit harder than the other two, but it certainly is still possible. And the bottom line here is, is ident. And how do you get an ident? You have to really understand a person's personality, who they are, how they think, so that you can zoom in on that ident. If it's a place, uh, meditate there for at least a few minutes where you can take in all the stimuli and store it in your memory. And once again, if it's a thing, it's just a matter of being familiar with, with how it feels in your hand and, and being able to sense uh, any sort of imprinting that is uh, inside that particular object. Okay, so that's astral targeting for beginners. If uh, this video helped you in any way, why don't you hit the like button, share it with those of like minds. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you have, hit that bell button. You'll be notified when we have uh, the Wednesday 2 p.m. video come out, as well as the Saturday 8.15 a.m. in the morning video. Uh, and that's Eastern Time, United States. Uh, and uh, make sure you leave those questions and comments because they might just pop up in a future episode. And as always, this is Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane.